Hello everyone. I welcome all the learners to the Youth Mind initiative of 10 minutes and newspaper done. Whether you are a mains candidate or next year prelims candidate, newspaper and current happenings is indispensable and you can't finish it sooner in qualitative way anywhere else than this initiative. So let's do our bit today. We have selected 6 news for 31st May and you can download the PDF from our Telegram channel and website. First news is an interesting story about gender equality. Till 2002, khaki sari was the uniform of women in the Kerala police, but N. A. Vinaya, who joined the force in 1991, refused to wear a sari. In 2002, the then DGP issued a circular by changing the uniform of women in the police force from sari to bush shorts. However, they were not allowed to tuck in their shorts. Miss Vinaya challenged the DGP circular in court. alleging that it was discriminatory and anti-constitutional she fought a legal battle for gender equality the court agreed to miss vinaya's argument and she got back the three increments which were cut as disciplinary action in 2014 the police force itself officially adopted the gender neutral uniform in this context we can mention the quote of the chinese philosopher lao tzu that is the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step So we can say that Miss Vinaya walked the one step in the journey of achieving gender-neutral police uniform in 2014. You can use this example in essay writing or as an individual standing against the system for her rights in ethics questions. Second news: a new Jupiter-sized exoplanet with the highest density known till this date and mass 13 times than that of Jupiter has been discovered by an international team of scientists. led by professor abhijit chakraborty at the exoplanet research group of the physical research laboratory ahmedabad what are exoplanets an exoplanet is any planet beyond our solar system the newly discovered planet by scientists from india germany switzerland and the usa is with a density of approximately 14 g per cm cube massive giant exoplanets are those having mass greater than 4 times that of jupiter The Indian Space Research Organisation (ISRO) said that the discovery of this massive exoplanet was made using the indigenously made PRL Physical Research Laboratory Advanced Radial Velocity Abu Sky Search Spectrograph called PARS at the 1.2 meter telescope of PRL at its Guru Shikhar Observatory in Mount Abu. The newly discovered exoplanet was found around the star called TOI 4603. What sets this discovery apart is that the planet falls into the transition mass range of massive giant planets and low mass brown dwarfs with masses ranging from 11 to 16 times the mass of Jupiter. Only fewer than 5 exoplanets are currently known in the mass range so far. A question related to space was asked in 2015 prelims about Goldilocks zone. If you know what is Goldilocks zone, please write in the comments below. Third news A fresh round of excavations at the site of Delhi's Purana Kila have uncovered evidence of the continuous history of the city since the pre-Mauryan era. The findings include shards of painted graveyard pottery which are usually dated to around 1200 BC to 600 BC. This is later Vedic period. Purana Kila built by Sher Shah Suri and Mughal emperor Humayun is believed by many to be the site of Indraprastha as mentioned in the Mahabharata. The new excavations have also found remains of a 900-year-old Vaikunth Vishnu from the Rajput period, a terracotta plaque of goddess Gajalakshmi from the Gupta period, the structural remains of a 2500-year-old terracotta ring well from the Mauryan period, and a well-defined four-room complex from the Shunga Kushana period dating back to 2300 years ago besides beads seals coppers coins and a bone needle the place have also evidence of being a trade center as it has more than 136 coins and 35 seals these efforts have revealed nine cultural levels representing different historical periods like pre-mauryan mauryan shunga kushana gupta post gupta rajput sultanate and mughal fourth news The latest report by the International Energy Agency World Energy Investment 2023 shows that investment in clean energy has increased in recent years with a transition mainly fueled by electric vehicles and renewable power. 
However, investments are concentrated in advanced economies like China, Europe, USA. More worryingly, the decline in the prices of clean energy technologies has reversed slightly in the past two years. That means clean energy started being expensive. Now, reasons for increased investment. The report shows that economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic coupled with the global efforts in tackling energy scarcity, have significantly propelled investments in the renewable energy sector. The report also points out that Russia's invasion of Ukraine has led to substantial instability in the fossil fuel markets. It has accelerated the deployment of various renewable energy technologies despite triggering an immediate scramble for oil and gas resources. Now, data supporting the above report. In 2023, low emission power sources are expected to attract nearly 90% of the total investment in electricity generation. Among these, solar energy shines brightest. Investment in solar energy is projected to exceed $1 billion per day in 2023, totaling $380 billion for the year. There are regions other than China, Europe, USA that are demonstrating progress. India, for instance, continues to exhibit robust investment in solar energy. Brazil's deployment of renewable energy is on a consistent upward trajectory, while investor interest is escalating in parts of West Asia, specifically Saudi Arabia, UAE and Oman. The various hurdles like higher interest rates, ambiguous policy frameworks, market designs, financially constrained utilities, and a high cost of capital in the ways of investment. Fifth news is about USA trying to save its superpower status. The Trump era focus on the US to decouple from China is being phased out by a new concept. The USA has expressed that it is shifting its policy on China from decoupling to de-risking. The EU has already declared that its approach to China will be based on de-risking. The recently concluded G7 summit at Hiroshima through its leaders' communique has also expressed the grouping's consensus on de-risking. Now, what is de-risking? After the establishment of diplomatic ties between the US and China in 1979, both the countries embarked on the path of increasing economic interdependence. China's rise not only came at the expense of America's global cloud, but also the latter's domestic industry, which got hollowed out in its four-decade-old economic embrace with China. The Trump administration made it a point to attack the gargantuan bilateral trade imbalance in favor of China. It also wished to keep the U.S.'s high technology sector out of China's reach. In a series of moves, Trump raised tariffs on Chinese imports, which invited retaliatory tariffs from China. The U.S.-China trade war started, and bilateral relations were set on course for a decoupling from the American standpoint. Most recently, the label of decoupling has been changed to de-risking. According to the USA National Security Advisor Jack Sullivan, de-risking fundamentally means having resilient, effective supply chains and ensuring we cannot be subjected to the coercion of any other country. While decoupling stands for an eventual reversal of the four-decade-old project to enmesh the two economies, De-risking aims to limit such an effect only in areas where it undercuts the national security and industrial competence of the USA. The US geoeconomic initiatives like the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment as well as the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity are also supposed to reflect the spirit of de-risking. Casting the USA-China relations as a new Cold War and a zero-sum game appears to be risky for the USA. Bringing more nuance into its earlier decoupling approach could bring down China's guard and give the USA more room to reconsolidate its strength. Now, what could be the geopolitical ramifications of de-risking for India? India will stand to benefit from de-risking by leveraging its benefits like attracting supply chains and confronting China's aggressive moves but it could also come at a cost. With the Russia-Ukraine conflict and the consolidation of the European alliance being the major triggers behind this shift, de-risking could lead to USA focus on the India-Pacific being diluted, at least for the short term. Sixth news, dozens of NATO troops secured a municipal building in the Kosovo town of Zwecken a day after 30 NATO soldiers and 52 Serb protesters were injured in clashes. 
unrest in the region has intensified since ethnic Albanian mayors took office in northern Kosovo's sub majority area after April elections the Serbs boycotted. Nowadays, UPSC prelims is frequently asking about the places in news. Keeping that in mind, please mark the following places in the maps. Where is the Kosovo? Kosovo is a country with partial diplomatic recognition in the Southeast Europe. Kosovo lies landlocked in the center of the Balkans, bordered by Serbia to the north and east, North Macedonia to the southeast, Albania to the southwest and Montenegro to the west. Kosovo has an ethnic Albanian majority with 4% subpopulation. Kosovo unilaterally declared its independence from Serbia on 17th February 2008 and has since gained diplomatic recognition as a sovereign state by 101 member states of the United Nations. Serbia does not officially recognize Kosovo as a sovereign state. Now, what are other nations who are not recognized as a sovereign state by all the United Nations countries? If you know few of them, please mention in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Let us know your feedback in the comments. Keep visiting our website, Telegram, Instagram and Twitter.